Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 20th, 2017. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Home over Miami, shine on my love and The president is giving another speech, so let's listen in for a minute and see how the boss is doing. I, I want to. Lock her up. Lock I want to have them get up and get the glamour and the glory, and I just want to have a few of them come up and they'll speak for a little while. Short, if they, the shorter the better. That way we can we can get all of you. We'll get everybody up, right? Okay, I'm out of here. Okay, that's but, enough. Uh, okay, that's enough. I'm going to talk about the Miami, the midget in the Miami Beach Hotel. Welcome to the program. I had enough already. I, I mean, I'm glad he did it. I'm glad the big corporations are going to be rolling in uh, in money like never before in their life. I'm glad that the major corporations had the biggest win of their of their dreams. I'm so glad you have no idea. I'm glad in a way you could never imagine. This is so wonderful that big business has benefited because, as you well know, to conservatives, big business is America. To conservatives, what's good for big business is good for America. It doesn't matter if people uh, will starve to death in some, some quarters of America. That doesn't matter. What matters is that... Their bosses in big, big business are happy, therefore they're happy. Now, you can wrap yourself in the Constitution, you can wrap yourself in the American flag, but there's more to the tax bill than meets the eye. And the fact is, what about the families? Will a tax bill help families? Yes or no? I don't even want to talk about it. I'd rather tell you a story about uh, the midget in the Miami Beach Hotel. This is my last broadcast of the year 2017, by the way. For the first time in my 24-year career, I'm taking a whole week off, and uh, that's it. It's as simple as that. So get it while you can. The phone number is 855-407-282. I am taking requests. Just know this. The only guarantees in life are death and taxes, according to Ben Franklin. He's allegedly the man who coined that phrase. Death and taxes. So do you want me to talk about taxes now or death? How about neither of the above? There must be something in between death and taxes. But I know many of you are diehards, and you can't get enough of uh, the president. So let's go back to the president just for a second. Let's hear what you... Great job, Oren. Wow. Oren Oren is a special person. Tim Scott, who has been so incredible, he's going to say a few words. Okay, I had enough. Sorry, this is not radio. This is not radio. This is not for me to do. This is for the cheerleaders. This is for the people who uh, wear the special clothing and uh, cheer everything that is done by the government. This is not supposed to be an arm of the government. The media is not supposed to be an arm of any government, whether it's Obama's government or Trump's government. That's not our job. But anyway, this is the miracle of talk radio, and I think I will um, defer to the audience, which is the only guarantee in life is that the Savage Nation is on right now, and that you have an opportunity to call 855-472-82 and... Call in your request, whatever you want. And while you're doing that, I, I don't know if I should tell you about the midget in the Miami Beach Hotel. How many people want to hear about the midget? Jim, there's only two people. Clint, do you want to hear about the midget or not? Clint's busy screening calls. Jim, both guys, they're my only audience, say yes. They said they'd rather hear about the midget in the Miami Beach Hotel uh, than Trump speaking about the tax bill. I and mean, what's there to hear? We know we that passed the bill. Great. The world is a better place. All of the sycophants in the media who hated him last year and now love him will be licking uh, the, the black polish off his boots tonight. What is there to be happy about with the tax bill? Tell me. Do you know actually what it's going to do for you? Nothing. We'll, let, we'll see how much of it trickles down. It's a trickle-down economy model. The assumption is, is that if AT&T and Verizon do well, you'll do well. Okay, let's wait and see how much of it trickles down. That's all. 
What is the weirdest thing to happen to you on your vacation in your life? What is the weirdest thing that ever happened to you on a vacation? I really wanted to ask you that on the Savage Nation. Something must have happened that you want to talk about. Do you or not? Well, let me tell you about the midget in Miami Beach. Let's see if it's still funny. It's an odd story. It's not a funny story. So we turn the clock back a number of uh, years. When I was still a wee lad in college, you see, we drive to Miami from New York City, six guys to a car, shifting the driver's seat. And what is it, 1,500 miles, and we're doing an average of what? You figure with a stop and a this and a that. I don't know we got there in, I don't know, 16 hours or something like that. I don't really know how long it took. It was astounding. I don't know the number of hours, but it was amazing to wind up, as a kid from New York, the first time you wind up in Miami, it's like going to another world. And so coming down Collins Avenue and the radio starts to pick up Cuban music, I was a big Cuban music nut at the time. As north as, uh, and even north of Palm Beach, you could start to pick up Havana stations. And we'd be just rolling in that car. I mean, we're all music lovers. And, uh, we get into Miami and this and that. And we stayed in cheap hotels. In those days, Collins Avenue was a dump. It had seen better days. So, uh, my friend Arnie and I, and he stayed in a, he just died this year, poor Arnie. But Arnie and I, if I remember correctly, stayed in an old, aging, great hotel in Miami. I don't know the name of it. It was once a great one. But it was hit it seen better days. So we check in, and bing, bing, the bell rings. A midget comes out, looks like a little Philip Morris midget. I swear to God, wearing an outfit. There was one, like the bellhop. And we looked at each other like, a what? An actual midget bellboy? Yep. So the midget bellboy, I figured I'll put my light, my money into a uh, safety deposit box, figuring out how much money did I have with me. I don't know, 200 bucks. I don't know what I had. I have no idea what I had, but whatever I had, it was all I had. So I asked the desk clerk about a safety box. The midget opens one up. I put the money in, keeping five bucks, who knows, whatever. And we go up to the room. All right, so Arnie goes to his room. I go to my room. And whatever we did that night, who remembers? I have no idea. I go to sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. Something was wrong in the room. It was big, but it was old, and the sheets were, like, clammy. I wake up and turn the lights on, 4 in the morning. I'm covered with bed bugs. Oh, uh, uh, you, you're talking a Halloween story. You're rubbing them off. You're showering. I want to get out of that hotel so fast. So I wake Arnie up. Come on, let's get out of here. He says, oh, God, bed bugs in his bed, too. We go downstairs. It's 3.34 in the morning. I said, okay, we're checking out bed bugs. I said, I need my safety deposit box. Desk clerk says, what safety deposit box? You have none. I said, what? What, are you kidding me? I said, get the midget out here. And the midget was still on duty. I think he worked 24 hours a day. I think that's why he was so short. He never went to sleep. Comes out. I said, I want my money. He says, there is no money. You have no deposit. I pick up an ashtray, a glass ashtray. I can remember to this day. And I threatened to kill the midget with the ashtray if I didn't get my money. So they call the Dade County Police. Naturally, the cracker comes in. I mean, in those days, anyone from the north was an enemy. And the cop threatens me, of course. I said, they robbed my money. So he says, listen to me, Yankee boy. He says, uh, we're going to put you in a, in, in a who's gal. There is no money. I said, there is money, and I'm not leaving it till I get it, because it's all I have. Well, I don't know. All I know is suddenly the midget comes out of the back with the money. He says, oh, yeah, right. I had the wrong number. Here's the box. And every dime was in there. That's the midget in Miami story. And I say, well, what's the big deal about this? It's not a big deal. It's just a story. How many of you ever been a midget in a Miami hotel? It's a unique story. No, not a great story, but a unique story. I remember in those days, you could get a breakfast on Collins Avenue for 29 cents. Would you believe it? Two eggs, potatoes, toast, and I think you had to pay extra for, 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 for coffee. It was like, you know, if you were poor or a student, it was a great place to go. And it was all about, you know, having fun, girls and boys in Miami. It's that simple. And that's the story. Now let's go back to the really important stuff like the tax bill with Orrin Hatch and President Trump. Let's listen to see where, who's giving the next little uh, speech. We're going to try a very special guy and great friend of mine, Vice President Mike Pence. Okay. Next, next story. Next story. Sorry. Uh, this is not an arm of the government. This is not an arm of the federal government. It never has been and never will be. This is the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. And let me remind you, I wrote Trump's war, which got him elected. I got him elected. Then I wrote Trump's war. I wrote it 
because I was instrumental in having him elected. So don't tell me I don't know where I'm coming from. And this is not about unhappiness with the president. It's just that I don't want to hear any more speeches anymore. It's enough already. Must every second be given over to the presidency? Can we can we have a minute, a break for one minute? Okay, I have a request coming in, 855-407-282. Lance on KSFO. Lance, welcome. What's on your mind? What's your request? Yes, well, Dr. Savage, you've spoken before about your Uncle Mo, but you've only given one story. I'm, I'm interested in more about Uncle Mo. I presume that there's something deep about him. That... All right, let me see if I remember who he is. I mean, I know I had an Uncle Mo, but which Uncle Mo story do you recall? Well, there was something about a slide rule. One day you were talking about mathematics. Oh, my God. God rest his soul. I have that slide rule uh, 30 feet from here. I carry it as a treasured uh, part of my life. Uncle Mo, Uncle Mo, Uncle Mo. Well, I don't know that there's much to tell about him other than he was a great guy. And uh, I love the guy very much. He died a horrible death of liver cancer. He was a vegetarian all his life. And in those days, vegetarianism was very, very um, rare and odd, incidentally. It didn't do him any good. He was. I found out years later he had been a runner in the New York, New York mar Marathon. I believe in the 1930s, I saw pictures of him with a number on him in the 20s or 30s. I didn't even know there were marathons in those days. Who thought old guys ran, right? You always had an image of them on a push cart. But no, he ran. Athletic, strong as iron, still got cancer and died. And I remember when he was dying in Long Island Jewish Hospital, my aunt, tough as nails from Russia. He was moaning and begging, you know, to, to be relieved of the pain. It's a sad story in a way. I don't even want to tell it to you. My aunt was tough and she was a very, she was a big realist. She didn't mince words. She didn't even know how to mince words. So uh, she yelled at the doctor, the intern, as her husband lay dying. She says, what good are you? You can't cure and you can't kill. I never heard it stated better than that. Now, I believe that pain treatment has gotten better since those days, but that was that story. And there's not much more to it than that. You know, you know people live, and they live their lives, they have a family, and they go on. And the rest is, uh, there's not much more to tell. I don't know any other stories. I hope that doesn't satisfy you because it's not that satisfying a story. Uh, is he hung up? He hung up already? He fell asleep with narcolepsy. Here? Can you hear me? Yeah. Did you hear my story yesterday about Rabbi in a brothel? Me? Yes. Yes, I did. Did you like the Rabbi in a brothel story better? Well, I suppose so. I mean, Uncle Mo has his place in your life, but the rabbi in the brothel is very good. Yeah. Well, I'm sending you a copy of that uh, story inside, inside uh, God, faith, and uh, and reason. This is the Savage Nation. We're taking um, predictions. We're taking uh, not predictions. Should I get the fortune to hand reader on for a prediction? Maybe we can get him on Vernon. Last show. Come on, you don't know that midget. Jimmy on line eight. How could you know the midget? Hey, Dr. Savage, how are you? How do you know the midget? Well, what happened was that I was working at the Arlen House on Collins Avenue in 1969, after I came down from Woodstock. And he was working at that point in the various motels, like the Hawaiian Isle, the Dunes, all the way what, up. The, you think there was only one midget on my, in Miami who, got, who did the rounds? Yeah, but I doc, I doc, I have his picture. I'll be more than happy to send it to you. He's in Marco, are you, uh, Jimmy, are you pulling my leg? Or there really was a midget on Collins Avenue, other than the one I mentioned? And my son just got killed by the terrorists in downtown New York City. I would not kid you. I'm very dead serious. If you want, I'll be more than happy to mail it to you. Well, I'm not... Well, now you got me confused. What do you mean your son got killed by who? By the terrorist that the, my son was riding a bicycle, and that guy just... Oh, oh, the nice Muslim who drove the car down the bike path that's been swept under the rug by the liberal media? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, well, I, I don't want to I don't want to dwell on it. I can't. I can't do it. Jimmy, I'm sending you a Christmas gift, God, faith, and reason. I can only give you my, uh, my, my sympathies. Okay, so the tax bill. You'll hear about it all day long tonight. That's all you'll hear about. It's better than anything. In fact, it's better than George Washington... It's better than the Battle of uh, Gettysburg. This tax bill is better than uh, the Revolutionary War victory over the British. It's better than defeating the Nazis. It is uh, superior to the Korean War in many ways. It beats the uh, bombing run over Schweinfurth. That's what you're going to hear by the end of the day. How much can you take of it? 
We know it's an historic tax bill, tax bill. We know that the Islamic State has been destroyed. We know that there's a 1.7 million new jobs. We know we have the lowest unemployment rate in 17 years. We know excessive regulations have been rolled back. We know that we have 60 record highs in the stock market. All well and good, but that's not my job. I am a talk show host. I'm not an arm of the government. Are you? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You're listening to Michael Savage and the Savage Nation on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. All right, welcome back to the Savage Nation. It's by request only today. We're not uh, going to be just, uh, that's what I want to do. Requ- your request. I saw, I want to talk about welfare for one minute. I want to do one political story. I want to show you how crazy the welfare system is. Man with world's largest penis is now registered as disabled. Because his 18-inch member is so big that it's considered a disability. He's from Saltillo, Mexico. They claim it's 18.9 inches, largest in the world. And it's really a story about welfare. It's not really a salacious story that I'm telling you. You think about it. Is it a disability? I don't really... How could you... I don't understand it. Without getting into stupid jokes, they actually have pictures of him with it blanked out in the article uh, from The Sun. And he wants to, um, he's disabled. The government takes care of him. <laughs> I, I don't know. The world gets crazier by the day. It's crazy. Doctors revealed he'd been stretching his thing with weights since he was a teenager. I, every four months they give me some economic assistance, but it's not enough. I visit the food banks every day to make take my meals at 12 noon. And so, I don't know. Is that That's now a disability as well? Everything seems to be a disability in the welfare state. I believe this is in Mexico, though. I don't know that such a disability would qualify in Trump's America. <laughs> I'm very serious. Do you think... No, there's no way to answer this. I don't know if there's anyone listening from HHS, but would a, a person suffering the same disorder, if it's a disorder, qualify for welfare in the United States of America? Are there any Americans who are suffering from a too large thing go? Who is on welfare because he's deciding, I don't know, I don't know. But it shows why I never use public restrooms. That's all I can say. I'll leave it at that. It is why I never use public restrooms. That's all I can say. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Well, I think that I should uh, give you, in addition to requests to the Savage Nation today, uh, uh, everyone's celebrating the uh, tax cuts, I guess. That's a big story. But how do you celebrate it on the radio? First of all, I'm going to pay more, so I'm not celebrating. I live in California. I voted for Trump. I'm paying more. So you want me to celebrate? I don't live anywhere else. They're eliminating my state tax deduction, as well as everyone in New York State who actually earns a living is going to pay more. Even those who voted for Trump will pay more. It is the stupidest thing on earth to say, well, well, that's a product of your state. You should complain to your state. Yeah, okay. Sophomoric is too high a compliment to a statement like that. There will be someone who doesn't even know what a sophomore is. So I'm not going to you know, celebrate what? What's, what's to celebrate? I'm not AT&T. Market will roar more, says Cohn. Well, that's Goldman Sachs. What are they going to say? It's going to go down? Here's an odd one. MSNBC top CNN in full year viewership. Drudge Report. Why would MSNBC suddenly be surging? Answer, because there are so many left-wingers in the country now. There are more, let us say, people on the left than there ever have been because of Trump. Rightly or wrongly, it doesn't matter whether you agree with that statement or not, there are more leftists than ever. More people have moved over to the Bernie Sanders side of things than ever, for whatever the reasons are. The polarization has never been greater in my lifetime. And so there's more, and they're watching the, the um, more stunning nonsense by uh, commies on on whatever it is. 
I'm not going to join the throng now. Make up stupid statements about them. I don't. I don't watch the channel. I don't find them int- interesting or entertaining. I don't watch CNN. I don't watch Fox. I don't watch cable news at all. Any if I watch news at all, if I watch it at all, and I don't, if I'm bored out of my mind and I don't, there's not a good car show, or uh, Hitler doesn't get killed again on History, or Naked and Afraid, or a good movie like The Bad and the Beautiful with Kirk Douglas. Oh, what a movie last night! On Turner Classic Movies, TCM. What a, I loved. I loved noir films. I watched The Bad and the Beautiful with uh, Kirk Douglas, 1952. He plays a ruthless producer who claws his way to the top and uses everyone along the way and then throws them out the minute he's through using them, including someone he stole a script from. What a story. So well done. Lana Turner. I didn't know she was that great. I had no idea who she was because I never paid attention to the stars of those days, but that woman had it all. She had a vulnerability to her sensuality and uh, an almost a pathos that she projected with her being. You got to see that movie, but uh, no. So if I don't, if I don't see a good movie or a military history show, or I'm watching TV, I just want to like space out. I go to 103 on my cable channel, which is um, uh, RE, a Russian network. Not because I believe everything that's on there. A lot of it is purchase time, which is just dreck, garbage. Some of the stupidest people on earth buy time on on RE. But is it RE? Is it RE Network? I think that's the name of it. Russian, whatever. RT, 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 and I can I can le- I can read between propaganda whether it's from Russia or the United States. So the reason I watch it is that the girls are not all blonde. They don't wear form-fitting sweaters. They actually can speak four languages, and they're super literate and articulate. The newscasters. It's a phenomenon to watch intelligent women, given the vacuity of the media in America, where it's all about a striptease posing as newscasters by and large. So I don't watch the news, you know, I don't know. But I hear MSNBC is doing better than CNN. What does that tell you? More people have moved to the left than ever because of Donald Trump. That's a statement. It's a statement of fact rather than a comment on the fact. WABC, Gabriel, line three, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Well, I just want to say thanks to you, Dr. Savage. You changed my life when I came to America. I was so proud to be here in this country. You don't have no idea. It was amazing to me. What are the welfare system trying to push me, welfare? Well, they're trying me to do something. I say, listen to me. I'm here. Let me worry about myself. So I never received nothing for the government because I see what the government do for people. And uh, it's amazing to me how foolish young people are in the United States. They may Gabriel, be- Gabriel, what country did you emigrate from? French Guiana, sir. And so when you came here, your your crowd basically said, you know, let's just go on welfare, it's easier kind of thing. And you said, no, why Why did you choose a different road? I, 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 nobody gave me nothing to me in my life. Nobody. No, I understand, but what is it that made you different? Just the hard work. I know what it is to be hungry. I was an orphan myself. Nuns raised me. I know what it is to be an orphan because I was an orphan. I know what it is not to have a father and a mother. So my goal in life, that was to be better than anybody else. And I'm unique. That's my motto. I'm unique. Nothing wrong with that. You can call me khaki. You can call me arrogant. No. I know what it is to be hungry. I know what is that. So that was my motto. And history and education. Even though that No, no, I understand. Real bad. But obviously, obviously you're a man who tries to make decisions for himself. Otherwise, you wouldn't be wasting your time listening to talk radio. I just talk radio has some influence over your decision making. True or false? In my life, when I when I hear you in California, I was who is this guy? I was like Doctor Savage, and I respect when you say doctor because you are doctor. So I was like, listening to you. I, I didn't believe a hundred percent what you say, but I went back and see my history and see history about United States. Every time you say something, I go back and search, and. You almost ninety percent right. I'm like, who is this guy? And 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 every time you, you every time you say something, I go back and I check. 
It's unbelievable. Why right, so you have, a, you have a native intelligence, obviously. You speak better English than I speak Spanish, so I respect the fact that you're quite good with languages. But you're also a man looking for the truth is what it comes down to. And uh, there is a saying, uh, the truth shall set you free, and apparently you've been set free by the truth of uh, the economy that we have, the free market economy. And I'm glad that you're listening to the show. You add the, uh, a level of IQ to the program. It's very important. Gabrielle, I'm sending you a wonderful book for Christmas, which is God, Faith, and Reason, and thank you for listening to the program. Okay, Jack on KSFO, line six, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Savage, thank you so much for taking my call. It's truly an honor to talk to you. I wanted to uh, make a comment on the, the fact that the polls have been so skewed, and you mentioned the MSNBC poll, how there are more liberals now since the Trump election, seemingly. But we do know that those polls are flawed. We proved that in our last election uh, when we elected Trump. I was curious if you thought that he had a chance for re-election, you know, in three years. Mm, boy, I don't know if I'm going to go out on a limb on that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess a Connie Barker would say, oh, sure, he'll be there for eight years. I don't know uh, what's going to happen. I can answer that question better after the midterm elections. We have to wait and see if the Dems will pick up any congressional seats, don't we? And then we can say, okay. We can see which way the wind blows. But until that happens, I think it would be just fishing in the air. I don't know. I think that, the, that there are going to be more people that are swayed because the news is trying every day to sway us to hate Trump, that we're supposed to hate him as a president. Do you think that those of us that... that, that well, actually, that's dying down a little bit because you notice the uh, narrative of the collusion with Russia has ended. Even the mad yeah, woman, of course. <laughs> even the mad woman who didn't stop screaming about impeachment, that lunatic... Whose well, name I forget. Good. She's immediately she's immediately for, she's immediately forgettable. She was a laughing stock thirty years ago. She's a bigger laughing stock. But even she stopped screaming for impeachment. Maxine Waters, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So she stopped with the impeachment. The Democrats came to their senses and realized it was not selling. The whole impeachment business is over. The collusion with Russia is over. Mueller is over. So I believe Trump will triumph over these forces. That does not translate necessarily into a sweep during the midterms. I believe that the midterm elections will be a determinant for the presidential elections that will follow two years later. So until that time, I really cannot make a prediction. Well, I just wanted to say, look, I, I just got my father both Trump's uh, Trump's war and God, faith, and reason for Christmas. I got them yesterday in the mail. I opened it up and started thumbing through God, faith, and reason. It's truly a blessing. We lost my mother a month ago, and this holiday is really tough for us. And this book has been a real, true blessing to me. I hope it will be for my father. I just thank you so much for everything, sir. How, 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 old is, how old is your father? Jack. Jack hung up. Okay, that's a nice call. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, losing a parent must be real hard. I know I lost two. I only I only had to. Father died in 1970. I was still a young man. Had a young child. Never met the grandchild. Not easy, but you know that's life. You, you know, lose them along the way. That's what the way it's supposed to be. It's better than the op the obvious. I mean, than the the obverse. Isn't it better to lose a parent than have a parent lose a child? It's the way of the way of all flesh. It's the way it's supposed to be. But you know, losing a parent is very hard, no matter what age they're at. And even if they go easy, it's a tough one. And the memories come back, the good and the bad, and, you know, some things you never get over. Who knows, you know, then you got the other one alone, and you got to deal with that, and the bitterness, the resentment, the anger, the sense of being left alone. And if you're an independent kind of personality, the other parent doesn't want you to leave them. They want you to be around them to take care of them. That's the way it was done for, for eons, but it's not the way it's done in this country anymore. Let's see what else is in the news. Oh, I don't know what's in the news. White House intel to hand out new subpoenas after FBI officials' testimony raises big questions. Who can follow it? Who can keep up with this one said that and that one said this? We know the tax bill. Here's a, here's a story that's worth talking about. Mistrial in Bundy case, latest blow to prosecutors in a long-running case. That's a good story. The, the Texas Bundy job. Mistrial. That's good. Now, this I don't know whether to believe. North Korea testing anthrax ICBM payload, says a report. You know, if he's that evil, it's time to whack him. It's that simple. I don't know what we're waiting for. What are we waiting for? Till anthrax hits L.A.? North Korea's beginning tests on mounting anthrax onto intercontinental ballistic missiles that would strike the U.S. Report Center on Wednesday, just two days. Do I know if this guy is really do, do, doing this? Japan's Asahi newspaper reported. Oh, they're reporting. Well, okay, look, we don't know whether to believe this. Japan is terrified, of, and rightly so, of the North Korean lunatic. 
they would like us to strike North Korea to protect them. So they're putting out what I think is propaganda. North Korea has started experiments such as heat and pressure equipment to prevent anthrax from dying even at a high temperature of over 7,000 degrees generated at the time of ICBMs re-entering the energy of the report. stated in part, there is unconfirmed information that has already succeeded in such experiments. I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. And I believe it's Japan, rightly so, terrified of the hermit kingdom. And, and maybe it'll turn out South Korea is long suspected North Korea is developing biological weapons. It's possible. So what are we waiting for then? What are we waiting for? Jung's Kim Jong mentally ill on scientists launched its greatest ICBM in November that they said could carry a super heavy nuclear warhead that could strike the whole mainland of the U.S. Well, what are we waiting for? Huh? Don't call me on that. What's the point? It is. What time is it on that weird clock? I'm going to, I'm not going to use the actual clock. I have to go to my uh, Facebook and Twitter feed. And I have to see what time it is on the clock where I have vegetables by the hour. The pumpkin is 12. The little zucchini. Uh, the eggplant is 2. What's that 1 o'clock vegetable? I can't even see what it is. Oh, a tomato. Okay, it is. What do you say? It's 14 minutes to the tomato on the West Coast and 14 minutes to the carrot. Uh, or the broccoli on the on the uh, East Coast. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Let me ask you, wouldn't it be great to have all the energy you want all day long? Of course it would be. Well, unfortunately, fatigue often gets in the way, even for everyday activities, and it seems to get worse every year. And there's a reason for it. When you're 20, your body has a natural ability to maintain healthy circulation. But by age 40, that ability decreases by half. It leaves you feeling tired. So what can you do to increase that youthful, natural circulation and fight fatigue? I think you should drink Super Beats. Super Beats promotes the body's own natural ability to produce heat, healthier circulation. For increased energy and stamina all day long, only Super Beats is made from beets grown to very exacting standards. And then they concentrate them into superfood crystals. So listen, if you want to increase your own natural energy, all you're going to do is call 800-481-0504 or go to SavageLovesBeats.com. And with your first order, you're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free and strips, indicator strips, to see how they are working in your body. And, of course, free shipping. Simple. Call 800-481-0504 or go to SavageLovesBeats.com today. Okay, what do you want to talk about? WABC, Mayor, line three, you're on the Savage Nation, Mayor. Welcome and thank you for calling. What's up, Mr. Savage? I fell some time ago. What's on I'm your Jewish. mind, Mayor? I'm a computer yes. broker. I'm switching you. That's number one. Number two, I extremely respect a lot of views that you say are conservative. And it really just do. I really appreciate that we have someone online. Well, I want to ask you, Mayor, you're a religious Jewish man, and God bless you for keeping the faith. Because without the religious people, whether they're Jewish or Christian, religion itself would be gone. I know that. But you're, you're, you are attached to very specific laws in your everyday life. How are you allowed to even listen to me on WABC in New York, for example? Speak for my, speak for my faith. You would have to speak to an expert to get, like, an, uh, I'm a kid, I'm a 20-year-old. Um, I, I, even though I'm legally 18, I'm, I'm an adult, but I'm really too young to like start explaining to them. I'm guessing millions of people are listening right now. If I say the wrong thing, and I'm saying something wrong... The, we're, we're, no, I, un, I don't want to get you in jeopardy. All I'm asking is, does your religious community permit you to listen to this show? Yes, of course. Okay, because I'm not a very religious person. I'm a God-fearing man, and I know the writings very well. Not as well as the learned men do, but I'm really kind of a rebel in many ways, Mayor. You know that. Yeah, yeah. You're a rebel, but you're a rebel in a good way. You, you use your head you use your head wisely. That's the main thing. God wants you to use your mind. And unfortunately, there's a lot of forces out there today that don't really let younger people use their mind. They say that, that, that conservatives, are they, they, hate, they hate people, and Jews hate people, and they claim that Israel is like a neo-Nazi kind of state where they don't 
let people live the way they well, want to well, live. Well, politically, politically, your organizational, your people on your side of the religious aisle are a hundred percent conservative. I know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a very, and that's a very, very good thing. And I want to thank you very much for being so kind as to have called the Savage Nation. And I will send you my holiday gift, God, Faith, and Reason. Even though Hanukkah is over, you can certainly read it anyway. And it doesn't matter whether you're Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, or other spiritual types. My autobiographical material highlights my glimpses of God that I have experienced over the whole of my life. It's all in God, faith, and reason. Put it under your tree. Put God back in Christmas. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. So, I'm a dog, and I just got adapted by this new human guy, and I'm starting to wonder how he got along without me. I mean, okay, something as simple as walking around the block. He's got this leash thing, and he puts me on one end and him on the other, and I'm just taking him around. I, I think he's afraid of getting lost. Without that leash and me guiding him along, I don't think he'd find his way back home. But it's kind of cute. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs>